the viewers know, second program, we're going to be discussing the incarnation. Jesus becoming flesh, presupposing that he's God. And I can talk about the contrast mm -hmm. there. I think that would be more appropriate for the topic. Yes. So but do we have other callers or? Uh, yes, we have Mano. Hey, Mano's Good back. Good evening, okay. Mano. Yeah, right. You are live. Go ahead. Good evening. Good, e Good evening. Good yes. evening to all. Yes. How are you? How are you? Hey, Manu, Manu oh, before, you. Be, before, you, before you comment or ask your question, let me just ask because uh, we made a comment about Muslims who, who focus on the Quran only. Uh, yes. Do you agree with Hamza Abdul Malik that uh, placing Muhammad in the Shahada would be shirk, or do you think that's okay? Uh, no, I, I do not agree with him, and I'm going, uh, that was one of my points I was Good, going to Good, bring it up. Okay. Um, uh, I just wanted to say uh, as the introduction that I, I thought that Sam did a fairly well job of presenting his points. His, what he presented was uh, fairly accurate. You were, you were not spinning anything that I could see. However, the, uh, with the context of why that Shahada, you have to say Muhammad is God's messenger. You have to realize pre-Islam, pre-Muhammad uh, time, Allah was actually God of the Arabs, except that they had appointed and adjoined partners to him. So what happened, Muhammad came, the Prophet Muhammad came, and clarify this fact that this God that you have adjoined other gods or goddesses to is actually without any partner. And so that became Muhammad's um, message as he said that I am not, I am supposed to be the first uh, Muslim. However, your father Abraham was truly the first Muslim. And in the Quran, he says that he's the one who actually named you Muslim. So when um, Muslims do say that Shahada is actually not putting those uh, Muhammad and Allah as equal, but those two articles of the faith are absolutely necessary because other parts of Quran also Muslims are commanded to not put any separation between any of the messengers of God. And That's as, what as you're a doing, matter of fact, there's another part of Quran that says those people that they want to put separation between messengers and believe some and not believe some, they're in trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that part horribly, but we, we get where yeah. I'm going at. Manu, can I comment on what you part. said so far? Can sure. I comment? Uh, you just said that the Quran says don't make a distinction between any of the messengers. However, the Shahada does precisely that. Instead of saying there is no God but Allah, and so-and-so is his messenger, or all of the people mentioned in the Quran are his messengers, you single out Muhammad, so you are making a distinction. That's the first point. Uh, secondly, you said, well, because of Muhammad's circumstances, his situation, he was preaching to a pagan society that believed in many gods, and he told them that there, this god has no partners, and so it's crucial and vitally important that they acknowledge there's one god and that this is the messenger of God. However, the Quran also testifies that this was the situation that many of the prophets and messengers of God found themselves in. For example, the story of Abraham. Let's go just with that example of Abraham. The Quran says that his father was an idolater, his people were idolaters, but nowhere in the Quran will you ever find Abraham saying that you must now repent and confess there is no God but Allah and I, Abraham, is his messenger. In fact, nowhere in the Quran do you find any of the messengers saying that you must make this confession acknowledging there is not God but Allah and that I particularly am his messenger. So the Quran doesn't support what you're saying. And uh, the fact that you have to single out Muhammad in your confession shows you are making a distinction. I haven't even read the quotations about the Arabic conjunction wa, and I'll wait for that because I want to hear your response to what I just said. What you said, it, it is correct. Uh, however, I don't believe as a Muslim, I have studied Quran over 20 years. I don't believe somebody by saying that simple phrase is considered to be Muslim sure. to the standard that God would require. If you gather, if you read Quran and, and really, really uh, read it, you realize that the standard is much, much higher, and God even says many parts that first, first you have to uh, be a Muslim, then the faith Good. First, all right. um, enter your heart and you will grow in it, and then there's another part of the Quran that says that maybe you will be um, shown compassion to. 
Mm. Maybe, right? Go but ahead. You said maybe you will be, but notice Does what you said. First, you have to be a Muslim, but that's my point. I'm not simply saying that confession guarantees salvation. And by the way, we'll talk about sin and Islam in the second program, Lord willing, and about the importance that confession has. But notice what you said. You first have to be a Muslim and then carry out all the responsibilities that the Quran enjoins upon you. But my question to you is, can you be a Muslim without saying there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger? Can you just say, I believe there is no God but Allah, stop at that and be a Muslim and recognize as a Muslim? Do you have to say the second part of the Shahada in order to be a Muslim? I do believe that you have to in the context of realizing that, the, that Muhammad brought this message and we cannot separate him or exclude him from any of the messengers. Ma Ma Mato, 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 just, uh, 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 just, just to clarify, because you, you said that, that that is required, and yet you say you, you believe in the Quran and not the Hadith. So where do you get that from the Quran? Where do you get that creed, yes. that, uh, that confession from the Quran? Because that, you, as you know, that confession comes from the Hadith, which you reject. So where do you get that from the Quran? I mean, in other words, you must be putting that together from, from somewhere. Where are, you, where are you getting it from? I, I'm, I'm putting that together from Quran. However, if somebody wanted to give another shahada, uh, if somebody wanted to say, I believe in, you know, there's no God but Allah, which is God, and I believe in all his messengers and the Prophet Muhammad, that would be just as fine to me. Okay, that's I, I would not say that, well, you're, you're modifying something you shouldn't modify. I'm not, uh, I don't view it as strict. My main concern is that the Prophet Muhammad should not be excluded under any circumstance to be to to be viewed. But as but, but 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 Manu, the, the question the question the question is why? If what's important if what's important is let's say that you um, that you believe in God that you uh, that you pray five times a day or however many times a day that you give to the poor. That whatever you do, whatever the requirements that uh, are necessary, why is it that you couldn't do that and not believe in Muhammad? In other words, why is it that this particular person, uh, you have to believe in him and you have to specifically confess that I believe in him as a messenger? Uh, and I mean, th think about it. That, that, that's what's bothering us here. We're saying, all right, if what's, in, if what's required is following Islamic morality. So let's suppose someone believed in every moral command of Islam. So he's going to do everything Islam commands him to do morally, but just doesn't believe Muhammad is a prophet. Why would this person uh, not, be, uh, not be recognized as someone who's going to heaven? Why would this person not be a Muslim? That's what we're saying yeah, is exactly. you're taking all the things that a person has to do and adding Muhammad into that equation. This man, this mere human being. Uh, we're adding him into the mix as something necessary and something that surpasses even being a moral person. In fact, it would nullify your Islam, right? If you say, okay, I'm going to do everything the Quran says, but I don't accept Muhammad, then you're not a Muslim. That is correct. No, let me That's the point. Why believe, why believe the way I do? I believe there is something very similar to that that the uh, Messiah Jesus himself also brought to the Jews. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify that with Koran. Koran says that they broke the covenant, meaning the Jews at that time. They broke the covenant. They were, not, they were believing some of the book. They were rejecting some of it. Okay. They were doing many things. They were persecuting the messengers. Then he says, then God at the end of that passage says, were you believers? Were you believers when you did all this? Meaning you, you murdered the messengers, you, 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 all the things that you did. So when you go to the Gospels, you realize Jesus, how much he's emphasizing, saying, you must believe me. If you believe me, you believe the 